Written by Peter Jackson and Fran Walsh, as well as being directed by Jackson, The Frighteners tells the story of a man who uses his psychic abilities to con people. When a supernatural force threatens the town, he is the only one who stands a ghost of a chance against it. So without further ado, these are some things you didn't know about The Frighteners. Isn't it insane? Death ain't no way to make a living! The Chair, 1988, starred Trini Alvarado, and was another film where an electrocuted prisoner returns as a ghost. Almost all of the actors in the black and white footage of the Bartlett documentary aren't actually actors. They are crew members who are working on the film. Both Kate Winslet and Melanie Linsky have cameos. One is appearing on the cover of the documentary Lucy is Watching. Another is Linsky appearing as a deputy in the police station, as well as providing the sure name for Ray and Lucy. During the scene where Lucy is watching the killer documentary, VHS copies of some of Jackson's other films are around the TV, including Heavenly Creatures. During the scene where Stuart and Cyrus scare the Linskys, an Elvis statue floats by. Peter Dobson had played a young Elvis Presley in Forrest Gump 1994 and Protecting the King 2007. He also played an Elvis impersonator in Dice 2016 and The Ranch 2019. There's a scene in which Frank speaks with Lucy on the phone with a mouthful of food. In Back to the Future 1985, Fox was in a similar scene, speaking to Doc. Both scenes end with Fox saying, I'm on my way. During the scene where Frank is talking with Cyrus and Stewart about their concerns, the cereal he's eating is called Jeepers Creepers. There is also a box of Boo Berry. In case you missed it, Peter Jackson did have a cameo. He's the punk Frank runs into when he exits the newspaper building. One of the children that Cyrus and Stuart speak to in Frank's prospective client's house is Jackson's son. Many of the stunts we see involving the character of Frank were done by Michael J. Fox himself. During one rather simple falling stunt, Fox ended up breaking his foot. While he recovered, Jackson had him look over the script and make edits where he saw fit. The character of Hiles was written as a spoof of Arlie Ermey's character, Hartman, in Full Metal Jacket 1987. The actors who originally auditioned for the role just didn't fit right, so Ermey was asked to play the character instead. During Ray's funeral when Lucy approaches Frank, you can see a fire on the hill behind her. This is Frank's house being burned down. This was intentional as the filming at that location was finished. During the museum scene when Cyrus says, nice shootin' Tex, this could be a reference to the very same line from Venkman in Ghostbusters 1984. Combs was the reason behind quite a few characteristics and features of Dammers. He got appliances that made his ears stick out, black contacts, designed the scars and tattoos for Dammers' chest, and even got his hair cut in a very Hitler-like fashion. The reference that Johnny makes to the Russian cannibal creep is to Andrei Chikatilo. It's believed that his number of victims is in the triple digits. However, he was convicted for only 52 when he was sentenced to death. The Frighteners was originally written as a Tales from the Crypt episode, or feature film. However, Zemeckis wanted it to be its own film after reading the script and liking it. Johnny Bartlett was named after two victims of Charles Starkweather, Velda and Marion Bartlett. Sam Raimi and Tim Burton were considered to direct. Weta Digital LTD went from one computer to 35 to accomplish the effects for this film. Mention of possible actors for the part of Frank Bannister were Johnny Depp, John Cusack, Matthew Broderick, Tom Cruise, and even Danny DeVito. However, Michael J. Fox was the only actor seriously considered for the role. Robert Zemeckis had a huge part in this as he mentioned Fox while speaking with Jackson and Walsh. Fox has said that he turned down the part of Edward Douglas in The Island of Dr. Moreau, 1996, in order to do The Frighteners. Heavenly Creatures 1994 apparently impressed Danny Elfman so much that he reached out to Jackson offering to create the score for his next film. He didn't even know what the movie would be about. Elfman wasn't the only one who signed on because of Heavenly Creatures. Chi McBride agreed to join after seeing the film. 
one actor who auditioned for the role of Milton Dammers was Joe Mantena. Dee Wallace was cast as Patricia as a deliberate misdirect by Jackson. He was hoping that having someone known as the Mother in E.T. would cause the audience to not suspect her. A pretty regular occurrence was Fox referring to John Astin's character as Doc instead of Judge. There are several takes included in the bloopers that showcase this. We were originally supposed to see another character who never made the cut in the final film. This was the Gatekeeper, a cherub-like entity that served as the guardian of the cemetery. Some filming was done with a prop of this character, but ultimately he was cut from the film because Jackson couldn't give a good explanation for his presence. Thus, the Gatekeeper's role was given more to Hiles. Judge was originally supposed to be involved more. After the Reaper cut him in half, at the museum he was supposed to show up in the cemetery when Frank faced off against Johnny. He even had the line, Got to hand it to you, Frank. You defeated death itself. Judge also got a moment at the end of the film where he and Rustler say goodbye before going west. The reason we never saw these scenes is due to pacing issues and the lack of funds to complete the effects. However, you do see bits of them in the deleted scenes and making of documentary. Documentary. Due to wearing only one outfit during the later part of the film, Trini Alvarado was given a Barbie dressed in this same outfit on her last day of shooting. Much of Patricia and Johnny's background was inspired by a real serial killer, who was also mentioned in the film, Charles Starkweather. He killed 11 people in a two-month time span, with his girlfriend, Carol Fugate, being an accomplice. Starkweather was caught, tried, convicted, and executed by electric chair in the span of 17 months, while Fugate was released on parole after serving 17 years in prison. In the scene where Lucy escapes Mrs. Bradley's room as Patricia is pursuing her, Alvarado was supposed to remove the key from the door before it slammed shut. During one take, she was unable to do so in time and the door almost slammed on her hand. This rather unsettled Jackson and is a moment that's included in the outtakes. Christopher Stone sadly passed away from a blood clot while Dee Wallace was shooting this film. She flew back to the US for a while. After the film was finished, Wallace found out that Jackson had paid for her flights. The Frighteners was Michael J. Fox's last, as of filming this video, leading role in movies. It was filming in New Zealand that helped Fox decide that he wanted to be closer to his family and take part in fewer movies. After The Frighteners, Fox took on a role in Spin City. The MPAA prevented the film from receiving the PG-13 rating that was aimed for. Instead, it was given an R rating. Regardless of what or how much Jackson edited or removed from the film, the rating remained. As a form of spite, Jackson actually changed Dammer's death to be more graphic as a way of truly earning the rating. You can see the toned down cut of his death being a simple shot to his chest. The movie was supposed to be released in October, so it would be in the theaters for the Halloween season. But for some reason, the studio decided to release it in the summer. The Frighteners did not get a theatrical release in Tasmania, Australia. This was due to the events in the film being very similar to those that occurred during the Port Arthur Massacre in 1996. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like to let me know. See you later.